mode, I'm playing, no glitching, I'm back. Nigga, like I had an addiction, dropped him, let's go. Ooh, he couldn't take <laughs> What is up, guys? This video is going to entail um, building a weight box for the car. I guess kind of just modifying it to fit this car. We got this weight box off of Corey's car. And it being a 79 Ghia, the taillight panel is a little different apparently from a 70 or from a 93 car and we need to make a few adjustments for it to fit uh, correctly. So this thing goes up under here and hidden away. A lot of these classes require weight to be within the um, uh, outline of the body. So this will let us fit classes with external weight, if that makes sense. So. We we're gonna shake this car down on uh, the front side, you know, a uh, just a, a safer place rather right than the street, but not everything goes our way as you guys seen in the last video. So we just need to overcome what we can with what we have. So we gotta put this thing in the road to test for a street race in next weekend and then a race at the pad coming up. So um, we're just gonna get right into this video. We gotta cut the mounts off that thing and uh, measure and re-weld them up. So, we're just gonna take you guys along and go from there with it. So there'll be a lot of cutting and uh, fitting measurements and we'll show you guys the final product. Bear with us as we are working off the generator still. So I gotta run this thing off an extension cord as the shop is running off an extension cord right now. So um, the welding station, when we're finally moved in is gonna be over there and away from all the cars, but we just gotta work with what we've got now and uh, so that's enough for the talking. Let's just get right into the action. All right, so first things first, uh, this isn't gonna work out. So I've gotta take these charging terminals on off switch and the parachute cable away from the uh, license plate panel, relocate that, probably gonna put the on off switch in the top of the bumper. And then it's got charging ports just for um, you know ease of access, but this car has got an alternator. So I don't know when I would really ever need to charge this thing. And if I do, I'll just take the trunk lid off. So we're probably just gonna go ahead and do away with the charging cables from outside the car. Relocate that on off switch, cause we gotta have that and that shoot cable. And then this thing will be a breeze. And uh... All right guys, this measurement here does show that this weight box is going to fit. We come in at just over 10 and a quarter of an inch. So we have about half of an inch uh, to play with, quarter of an inch to play with, which is plenty. So the bottom of the deck lid is gonna be notched for this, but it ain't a problem. So I'm glad that that's gonna clear the wing and we don't gotta do nothing to the box itself. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and snatch this wing and deck lid off. Throw the weight back up there, take some measurements of the weight box and then get to cutting it up and fitting it to this car. All right guys, so uh, the weight box is in, trunk lid is notched and uh, we're gonna go ahead and try the first fitment of it. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and slot this thing on and uh, just give you guys a, just like an uncut fit of it. Um, I round the corners of it just cause we're gonna be handling both the trunk lid and the weight box a lot. So there's no sharp edges, no one's gonna get cut on anything. Um, that's the last thing I wanna do is anyone get cut, you know, hurt. But uh, let's go ahead and throw this thing on there and uh, I will pick you guys up in just a second. Well, check it out. It's like nothing ever even happened. So you can see our deck lid is notched. Just enough on both sides. It's gonna help a lot with uh, percentages on a bad road or a backside of a racetrack. And uh, the scares are gonna prove that. So, so I'll probably end up um, welding another plate stock and two more drilling two more holes and running it just like the top and then tying in uh the box through flat stock on the back side um it's just kind of like a trial and error thing guys you gotta you know you got you gotta work through issues and figure out what they are um at least we'll be testing by ourselves so if anything does happen no one's gonna get hurt or uh, cause an accident or anything but check out how that look is guys and that's the one thing i really um admired about Corey is uh on his car, anything he did do, he thought outside the box and uh, didn't make it look like a big pile of fucking shit. Uh, just the way he did things, you know. It's got no butthurt bar hanging off of it. It's got no um, dumbbells stacked 10 foot tall and whatnot. Um, it's just, you never know unless I made this video of it up under there. So we're gonna go ahead and 
wrap this thing up as far as the weight box and uh, get everything back to running as far as the cable and uh, we'll mount the on off switch tomorrow. So I got the car on the scales for the first time and it is 27.14. Now, usually I don't like to, I guess, show some things, but it's not the point of this channel. Um, it's here to help you guys learn and educate those that are interested to advance your program. So I did forget to mention that there is uh, about 80 pounds on the axle of lead weight. So that's called unsprung weight. So that's just direct force on the rear tires and not on the body of the car. So here we have, uh, so this car is probably about, and, and the weight box is on there, but the weight box is empty. So the weight box is probably like 30 pounds. So it's really like 110 pounds on the car right now. So empty, this car is about 2605 probably. So 2600 pounds even um, with a rear mount radiator, complete 15 gallon fuel cell and uh, aluminum block LS. <clears throat> so. Uh, yeah, that gets you guys an idea of what this car weighs with no ballast and the percentage is basically 50 50 It's 49 on the rear and 48 on the front um, And that's these two numbers I'm reading right here so <clears throat> But here we can show um, individual wheel weights To give you guys a, a, a cross balance of the car. So and the numbers speak for themselves right there. It's really not too terribly bad. The only reason the right rear is heavier than the left rear is it's got it's got that uh, 50 pound battery which shows right there um so that is with no weight we are 49.2 on the rear no weight in the weight box we just put on so i'm gonna go ahead and throw all this lead in there i don't know if we're gonna run it all the time or how often we're gonna use it it just it was in the uh, box when i bought the car from corey <clears throat> well i bought the weight box from corey so um this shit is uh it's pretty it's pretty pretty manly guys so um, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing in there we're gonna go ahead and see how much it weighs as well and i'm gonna show you guys how much this weight affects the percentage of this car and the location of the weight so this is definitely higher than the crank center line of the engine or the, i guess some people go off the crank some people go off the cam either way it's above both um the higher you can get it and the most further back is gonna uh, greatly increase your, your, your rear bias. It's kind of like a teeter top. So if you got to push in way back on a teeter top, it's a lot easier to push it down. If you go up to the pivot point, it's a lot harder, takes a lot more force. It's the same thing with a race car. <clears throat> that's why I go with the butt heart bars. I mean, these guys can run 50 pounds on a butt heart bar that's five feet above the roof line and 10 foot behind the car um, other than like this so per se is super good but at the same time i'm still going to run a lot more weight in that box than someone with a butthurt bar it's all in uh physics and uh it's, it's it's pretty simple once you do get it down another thing to note so the lighter the car the faster it is obviously but when you take weight from uh in front of the rear wheels and from behind the front wheel so per se um take an interior out uh fiberglass doors it's not really going to change your percentage it's just going to change your overall weight so that's the nice thing when you do do upgrades that are in the center of the car, you don't have to re, you should rescale it, but you, ideally you're not gonna make a uh, huge major changes as you would taking 100, 200 pounds off of the rear of the car or off the nose of the car. <clears throat> so um, with that being said, and speaking of the nose, that's why if you have a car wheeling real hard, you can throw almost 25 pounds or so. You can run a, a lot, light more light of weight if it's on the very nose of the car rather than if it's like um directly over the wheels or on the strut tire if that makes any sense because that 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 the pressure point is way further than either your uh instant center mine or you know the front wheel line where the car's trying to drive up under so um just a lot of things a lot of knowledge taken right there um i've tried my best to learn this and study it and I'm still learning as well. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this stuff on paper for you guys and on the scale. All right, so bear with me a little bit as the weight's not directly in the box. Um, just being a one man show, I can't hold that box open and put the, the plates in there. Um, it's just too heavy for me to do one handed and whatnot. But that gives you guys a, a good representation, um, especially just because the, the rear deck lid and wing are off of it and the weight is a little higher than what it's gonna be. So that'll really probably just about even out as far as that goes. But 
we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the scales. It, I'm happy with uh, what 145 pounds that far back and that high done. Um, for those that do know, uh, it helped four percent, guys, and that is quite a bit. So now we're at 2858 um, with no driver, and I'm 240 pounds, so that's going to put us at uh, <laughs> 3100 pounds almost, guys, with weight and, and, and no prep trim. That that that's heavy for a Mustang, like a Fox body, but. I mean, it is a full street car. It's got a full radiator. So, uh, but what do you do? You know what I mean? Um, we gotta get down. We gotta get down the surface. So, we, and hell, we might not even use that much weight. Uh, it really just depends on uh, how things are going and uh, how testing goes. But um, don't expect us to wait. Build a weight box or a bunch of weight in car ain't work. Uh, those on the keyboard don't get the credit <laughs> they deserve. Um, so. It takes a lot, guys, especially on power management, um, which this car doesn't have traction control. I've never had traction control, but it does have FuelTech 600. It has the capabilities to run a traction control, so um, we're going to make some videos and uh, go along together about traction control and whatnot. So um, this car will have traction control uh, eventually. Not not tomorrow, not next week, uh, maybe next month, but not in the near future. Um, but... I've never had it and I've done semi successful with racing, but uh, I've been out of the game for a minute. So I know a lot more people do run traction control now than what they used to. So uh, yeah, guys, so there's 4%. I do want to show you guys um, how weight transfer of a car does affect the weight value as well. This car does have, uh, doesn't have long travels. It just has strut extenders on it. But uh, some of you may be, uh, familiar with it's just a poor man's long travel so uh, we're gonna go ahead and jack this thing up a little bit and uh show you guys what we're working with i wish ember was out here so she could hold this camera but uh i'll give you guys a solid look i hope it'll make you motion sick so uh we're gonna go up about half stroke on this thing and uh you guys are really gonna be surprised i do think and you gotta think Power and torque's like a multiplier of these percentages. Um, and that just goes across the board to every car. It's not like this car's special or whatever. So here we are about half stroke um, of this. And I already know it's gonna be, I mean, yeah, guys, look, 76% now on the rear. Um, so let's go ahead and just for shoots and giggles, let's take this thing, not to full max, cause you're never gonna be full max unless you're on the verge of a wheelie. Right there is really about where this thing's gonna ride. Uh, down track, you know. Plenty of, it's not super loose, it's not, it ain't going nowhere. Um, that's about like where it needs to be. And we're sitting at 81%. So, um, if we took this weight off, what is that, uh, two and a half, three percent? So, uh, it goes a long way. Um, it's not drastically gonna change it as it's in motion, but um, anything, it helps you get to the percent you need to it helps you know it just flat out helps so uh but i think that's gonna wrap it up for this video guys if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up like comment um what else you guys want to see really i'm gonna just try to do my day-to-day -day when i'm doing the course uh, videos will flow better when i get like a tripod or more equipment but uh no smart businessman invest into something he doesn't know if it's going to take off or not and work at all so I don't want to go blow money on a bunch of stuff. We already have a 360 and uh, mounts and a couple other GoPros we've just had. So I think that's plenty to get a, a new beginner um, rolling and uh, rocking with a YouTube channel. So that's going to do it for this one, guys. We will see you in the next one.